old man, 9545, but mostly Rev. Okay. All right, good life. Great, thanks. Hi. Um, well, another Books and Cooks. Scott keeps count, track account. I have no idea. I, I know it's a lot. We can start counting in years soon. Forty-three. I had no idea when we started this. We we had no idea that we'd be doing this forty-three months from the first one. That's definitely for sure. Uh, I'm Bud. Thanks for coming. It's off season, just a few of us, but that's okay. Um, uh, normally, I host it, and some of the community cooks something. And and when we don't have someone from the community, I do I do them in the middle, so which is great, which I love. It's hard for me to watch someone cook and just be patient and watch and watch and watch. Um, uh, today I wanted to make um, some soup. I thought, you know, it's good soup weather's coming up. It's already soup weather and uh, it's, you know, all the winter squash are out in all the markets. Um, Village Market just brought in a bunch of um, local squash from Olathe. They've got, um, uh, this is an acorn squash, a butternut squash, a delicata, and uh, I think it's buttercup. Acorn and butter. No. That's a butternut. I think it's buttercup. Uh, the squash that I'm going to make my soup with today is, uh, for some reason, they're hard to find, and which is weird because I think they're the most delicious. Um, I, brought, I brought this one from home, and I already roasted it a little bit just so that we could get going a little faster just to make, um, you know, to use time. This is a red curry squash, K-U-R-I. Um, it looks like uh, a mini pumpkin. They're football-ish sized, but pumpkin shaped and pumpkin colored, but um, they don't have ridges like this, like a pumpkin does. You know how a pumpkin has uh, ridges that go in? They're smooth on the outside, a little bit like this, uh, but pumpkin colored. Um, so what it is about these squashes I like, I don't know. They're a little bit sweet. They're delicate. They're just delicious squash. Um, I think what makes really good soups, though, is stuff with them. I'm going to puree this soup. Uh, and I brought some garnishes to go with that'll be really fun. I, um, so I, what I'm going to make is I'll start over. I'm going to do a, a red curry squash soup that's roasted. I made some zucchini bread croutons. And the, it's just some leftover zucchini bread I had that I diced up and fried in a pan with a little butter and then toasted in the oven. Um, and I'm going to do a little whipped cream with it. And um, it'll make a simple soup really, really beautiful. Um, everyone here makes soups? Everyone into soup? It's a good one. All right, so to do this soup, what you want to do is start off with is, is getting the squash ready. And there's a bunch of and this is 100% personal preference. And the outcome's just a little bit different on all of them. You could just cut it in half, and I'll cut one in half, I guess, while I'm talking about it. Um, so the best way to do it is, is sometimes I start with a tip of my knife a little bit, right, and then just get it on the board and go through. You, you want to cut away from you, you know, the blade to the knife going away from you always when you're holding it. And then get back in that same slit and do the same thing the other way. And just be safe. So we could peel this and take the seeds out and dice it all up and make soup with just this in a, in a pan. Or we could roast it. Um, two different ways you could roast it. Just scoop the seeds out put a little bit of brown sugar and butter on it and throw them in there half just like this and roast them and scoop the flesh all out. It's probably the most common and easiest way to do it. These, uh, for this squash, I took the seeds out, um, cut it in little pieces and peeled them. Uh, um, I don't know why I did it this way. And then I roasted it in a pan just to get a little color on it. And that changes the sugars a little bit if you roast it in the oven. So if you like sweet, that's good. It doesn't give more sugar, it just tastes sweeter because the sugar chain's changing it longer. Uh, how are you? I was wondering where you were. Yeah. All right, now we can really get started. Um, I'm going to make this soup with butter, uh, so it won't be vegan, but it'll be vegetarian. I won't use any chicken stock. Often I do. Chicken stock's nice. Chicken has good flavor. Um, one thing that I am going to do, a cool trick that I, that I learned a couple years ago from a friend, is um, to make the uh, stock for the soup, I'm going to use everything that I scraped out of the inside. So if we're not going to use any, any chicken stock or anything like that, which gives it a nice, nice body and flavor, vegetarian, because uh, there's a ton of flavor in this. The, I've tried roasting the seeds. Um, these squash seeds, like pumpkin seeds do. Toasted pumpkin seeds are fantastic, and they'd be a great garnish for the soup. But um, squash seeds just don't toast the same, I don't think. 
they don't have the same nice flavor. So with this, with those seeds, I could just do that and water if I wanted to be really fast or toast them a little bit. And like I said, it'll just bring out the, the flavor of it a little more and make it a little sweeter. So I, I will toast these just a little bit in the pan with just a little bit of butter. So it's literally just all the membrane and seeds that I scooped out. And I just put those in a hot in a pan, get it hot, and just keep stirring a little bit until it toasts a little bit. Cover it in water, bring it to a boil, and let it simmer for like 10 minutes, five minutes, just to get the flavor out of it. And then that's the liquid we'll use to make the soup. I make... Um, risotto with squash like this a lot. It's actually on the menu this winter in the restaurant. Um, and so I would do the same thing. I would take the seeds out and make this stock and then take these and dice these up and use that as the liquid for my risotto and then throw this at the very end when it's done and it comes out really nice. It just gives you all that really nice um, flavor. So I showed you how to cut that in half. Just cut it in half and then just, and, and just scoop the seeds out with a spoon. It's really easy. And then pop this in the oven until it gets a little color at 350. You could do oil, you could do butter, you could do anything. A little something is nice on it because the oil, whether it's you know vegetable oil or, or butter, helps it brown a little bit and, uh, and it helps it taste delicious. So that's that for that and then that's just ready to roast. And then when this comes out of the oven roasted, because of these ridges, these are a little bit harder to peel. You can just hold it with a towel and the flesh will all just scrape right out. It's really easy. All right, so while that's going, it'll really start smelling like squash in here too. This middle part has such good killer flavor in it. It's so easy to throw away, but it's such a waste. All right, so that's going, right? And then for the vegetables for the soup, uh, sometimes I use celery, sometimes I don't. I'm not a huge lover of celery, but celery does have a nice flavor. I mean, celery does have its right time and place. I'm just going to do carrots and onions. Um, when I'm doing carrots, um, you know, I always scrub them and peel them. Even if I'm putting them in stock or something. I just like, I don't know, I don't, I'm not into carrot skins. I know a lot of people don't peel carrots, and I don't know, that's a personal preference, I suppose. So that, right, just peel a carrot. And I'm going to puree this soup, so I'm not too worried about the vegetables looking perfect and I'll be in the same size. I do care a little bit, though. You know, I, I, I want them to be similar because when they cook, I want them to cook at the same time. So if I have big pieces and tiny pieces, uh, the big pieces won't cook as fast as the tiny pieces. So I'm just going to dice up my carrot in medium dice size. And then we could brown these veggies too, or we could just boil them. Same thing. It's just it just changes the flavor. It's like the difference between eating bread that's toasted or not toasted. You know, it's still bread, but when you toast it, it tastes a little different and feels a little different. No, I can chop it fast. It's uh, something you just got to practice at. It makes it easier to cook if you can do this part really fast. And then so for this recipe of soup, that was. One squash. It was a little bit bigger than this one. It was probably about the size of this butternut squash. Butternut squash is the most popular in restaurants for, for sure. I think it's because they're delicious. I think it's because people know, know them really well. And I think it's because they're inexpensive and they're heavy. There's a lot of squash in them. So when you peel it and clean it and get it ready for soup, you get, you get a lot of bang for your buck, which is nice. But uh, you'll like this red curry. It's, I, I think it's much tastier. But you said they're difficult to find. They are, and I don't know why. City Market in Montrose has them. That's where I got it. I, I'm trying to order them now from people, and no one has them. I've called Horton at, at Buckhorn. I've called everyone down in Mancus and Dolores. and It's weird. No one has them. So i got three more people to call in Olathe to see if I can track some down because I need a bunch for the winter. City Market definitely has them. When they, he brings in squash, he brings them in. Because that's where I got this one that we're using now. Um, so this is starting to stick just a little bit, and that's all right. You know, it's just, that's okay. I want to get, I don't want it to burn, but it's browning a little bit. You can get as much or as little color as you want. The more you get, the, the richer the flavors will be. So I'll just keep that going, stir it once in a while to get the bits off the bottom. All right, so I've got one, that size squash. One carrot and one onion. 
And then the onion, you know, same thing. I'm just going to cut it similar size to that. If anyone has any questions or wants to say something, feel free to jump in. If I'm saying something that doesn't make sense, let me know. It makes definitely makes sense in my mind, but usually, uh, so often, sometimes it doesn't quite so much when I say, it. yeah, there's a little lost, lost on the way down. All right, so there's the carrots and onion, and I'll put that in my pot. Ooh, they cut my foot off. Yes, just an empty, dry pot. Thanks, Scott. I'm a rinser. I like having a helper. Um, all right, so then that's going, right? I'll start that up, fire that one up. And I'll just get a little color on this. I won't cook this one too much in the pan. Do you smell this squash, these seeds toasting yet? It smells good up here. I'm going to start crying now, though. Those onions. Um, the secret to um, cutting up onions and not crying is a sharp knife. If your knife's dull, it crushes the onion and it makes all the, all the juices in it squirt out. Um, so the secret to that is a sharp knife. Um, water helps too. If you get the onion wet and your knife wet and the board wet, it catches a lot of stuff too and, and stops it from getting up all over you. I've seen people do crazy things in kitchens cutting onions. My favorite is a bandana and ski goggles. I've seen that a lot of times. It's pretty funny. You know, when you're cutting 50 pounds of onions, it matters. I'm just going to get a little water. Get them real cold. That helps. I've never tried that one. I've never seen that one done. That's a, that's an interesting one. Right. Super super cold. That makes sense. All right. So that's going. Get that real hot. These are. I haven't cooked on these little burners in a long time. So then, can you see that? So that's, you know, I don't think you could use too much or too little water, just enough yeah, so that it's all in there. And you, so, you know, you just want to get the flavor out of all that. And then I got my carrots and onions going here. One rib of celery wouldn't have been bad in here. You know, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I don't know why I do sometimes and I do sometimes I don't. Um, let me talk about these real quick when I did it. So that was a leftover loaf of zucchini bread I had, banana bread, anything like that would be really nice. Um, the reason I chose this kind of bread is, is um, it has an interesting flavor and it's sweet. It'll really add something into soup rather than, other than just the crouton. A butter garlic crouton like you'd put in a salad would be really good too. But these will be a little bit sweet and it'll be a little contrast of flavor with it. Um, I got my squash already. I'll do the... The whipped cream for it now, too. God, those onions are getting me. Um, I'm not going to put any cream in the soup because I don't think it needs it. But I think it's a nice, it's a fun little garnish. I think when you get, it'll be a little contrast when you get little, you know, when you mix it in, you get little bites of, of cream in it. Uh, a soup that I make a lot this time of year, too, is a chestnut soup. And if I were doing this garnish with chestnut soup, I'd put a little sugar in it and make a proper Chantilly cream. But this is just, I won't put anything in it, just a little, just a little pinch of salt um, and do whipped cream. And man, whipped cream when you make it yourself is so much better than the, oh, I almost just said crap. The crap you get in a can. Um, I'm glad I caught myself. That was a close one. Um, it's fast too. You, you could do this in a KitchenAid. I know. You could do it in a KitchenAid or if you had something. It doesn't take long, though. You know, if once you, if, when you get it in a bowl and it starts whipping, it's fast. And then and I, I hold it like a pencil sometimes. Sometimes I'll hold it like a, like a hammer, um, like that. And the, the key is to hold it far back and so that when you whip it, the end whips back and forth because then it's going much faster than your hand. But you'll see, this is a fun garnish, too. 
And it doesn't take long to, to make a little something special to put in a soup and turn a really simple soup into something really special. And it definitely will. You'll see this one. I mean, look, it's already getting thick. Doesn't take long. Whipped cream's a, it's a good thing to have around. And, you know, a tiny little dollop's not too bad for you. I know no one wants to be all fat and eat a bunch of fat, but you got to spoil yourself once in a while. All right, so that's a saw, loose, like almost soft peak. And that's good consistency for a soup maybe, you know. Nice, give it a little body, a little thickness. And then a little bit more. And you can see it as it goes, it's starting to Yum. All right, let me let that sit and we'll finish that when, uh, when this gets closer. So these are getting translucent when a recipe says translucent. That's what they mean. So they're not, they're just starting to, you know, you can kind of see through into them a little bit more and they're kind of starting to get a little clear. Um, sometimes recipes don't want you to brown them and get color on them. They just want you to get them to this stage because um, they don't want you to get that, that sweeter, richer sugar flavor from them. All right, so that's ready. And then I'll add all these. And then for the amount of liquid, this is a good recipe because there's no numbers. You know, it's just kind of roughly, you know, one carrot, one onion, one squash. And then uh, the liquid, I'm going to puree it. And I'll just keep adding more liquid until it's the right, you know, as, as thick or as smooth or as thin as we want it. Just a little salt and pepper and butter. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, so when I did that, I... Um, I just buttered the pan a little bit, drizzled a little butter over them, and a teeny bit of salt, and pinch of salt and pepper, and tossed them. And they went in the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. They could have gone another 20 minutes maybe to get a little more color. That's going. Those are, this is just about to come to a simmer. It smells really good. All right, that's going. Now what do we do? Now we can hang out. Does anyone have any questions? I don't. And because they have those ridges makes them so difficult. So like what I was saying before is this the easiest way? Bake, bake them in the skin and scrape it off the, with a spoon. And you can lay it down on a board and hold an end and, and use the back of a spoon. And, and it'll scrape off really, really clean. It comes off really, really fast, really easy. Um, and you know, another thing it's fun to do in, in this type of a soup is uh, an apple. I got a little Granny Smith apple that, I'm, that I can use. And uh, I don't know why I just took that out. Um, I'm worried about doing this too soon and it changing color. Uh, apples are really nice garnish in a soup this time of year too. And it's apple season is now. You know, all the apples are off the tree and so they're all in storage and they store really well. So what I would do is just, you know, cut an apple going around it in circles, you know, and taking three slices off about that thick, you know, so I can get little pieces. And then turn it again, do the exact same thing. Get three little slices down to the core. And then roll it again, do the same thing. And this kind of stuff, it's nice to take your time and because these are going to stay whole and we're going to be able to see these. So it's kind of nice to uh, make them all the same size. So I'm just taking off three slices off each size, all the same size. And then there's just a little piece left to nibble on. And then I'll take these and Cut them in the same width the other way, and then leave all my stacks and cut them again the other way. And it goes pretty fast, you know. It's all these kitchen gadgets they sell on TV. I think are pretty silly because, you know, that's nice dice and that didn't take too long. You know, they're all the same size and that'll be perfect. Chop those in a little bit of water. Uh, I love pureeing soups. I, I I really like smooth soups, but. I do them so much that I start to think that I'm making baby food. So that's why I think, yeah, these, these garnishes make it nice, you know, so there's a little something in it, something that you're, so you can use your teeth while you're eating it. Uh, we could have peeled these if we wanted. I like rustic stuff. I don't think it's necessary. These are going bubbling away over here. This sounds good. This would be a good time to go to commercial break.
Yeah, right? <laughs> and all of our programs, if you're not a member, there's a lot of advantages to being a member. I am. So the water over the seeds and, and the, the membrane, that middle part, is all boiling real nicely now, you know. And it doesn't take a long time to get the flavor out of that. It's, um, it comes out really fast. Let me see if there's a way we can see some of it. Yeah, I'll put it in a, into this. That's great. So you can see the color of it. It's, a, it's real pretty. So then I got a strainer and a little bowl. I would, if I were at home, I would have just strained this straight into that soup. But I, wanna, I want you to be able to see it before I put it in the soup. I'm going to let all that run off. And this will give us some, a, lot more, a lot more yummy, squashy flavor to it. And with this, that's exactly what we want. All this would have normally got composted or thrown away. I seem to hate wasting food. But look at that. You know, I mean, that's all. I mean, if you taste that, it's delicious. It's beautiful. Yeah. Right. So that's, you know, that's going to make a big difference to our soup to, if we're just going to add taps, you know, we call it tap stock in the kitchen. If we were just going to add water, uh, you know, at least this now has the water got a little body to it. And that's it. I mean, that's, that's, that's it right there. You know, we could, I could have um, chopped these up and we could have left it chunky. Uh, some people like soups like that, you know, if those are all the same size, and that would have been delicious, too. I don't know what it is, why it is that I'm so into these pureed soups. All right, so let's let that boil. All that needs to do, the only thing we're waiting for with that is for everything to be tender. So, you know, so that I can puree it, you know, so it's soft enough to eat. It doesn't, you know, so it takes, it doesn't take too long. You know, it's been going pretty hard. The carrots are going to take the longest, I'm afraid. But let's see how soft the carrots are getting. Oh, we're getting there fast. And then it's going to want a lot of salt and a little black pepper. So that's probably a half a quarter teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper. It makes a big difference when you grind pepper fresh. It, um, it breaks down really fast. If you can get whole peppercorns and use a pepper mill or... A spice grinder, it really makes a di difference. And then this is kosher salt. Um, chefs like this salt just because it doesn't stick to your fingers. It's easy to pinch and stuff, and it tastes nice. Uh, sea salt would be great. Any kind of salt you have at home is fine. Iodine's important in your diet if you want to use iodized salt, but I think we get plenty now. We don't have those concerns like we did in the olden days. All right. Well, that carrot was good. Um... We could use any one of these squashes and do the exact same thing. You know, any one of them. Spaghetti squash are a little weird. The only thing I've ever used spaghetti squash for is to have it just as spaghetti sauce or yeah, with spaghetti good. sauce. Yeah, they're great, but not, not so much in a soup, I don't think. Um, God, just with red sauce. I do. You know what I mix a lot with squash is uh, sweet potatoes. A sweet potato mixed in with any one of these would be really, really nice, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's funny, you know, these, these, these things that we associate in our mind that go really well together all kind of happen to grow in, uh, in the same seasons and stuff. It's amazing how all these fall flavors work so well together. I don't know if it's because we know it because it's fall or because they, I don't know what, how it is, but fall things all seem to taste so well together. Same with summer things. Uh, and then I brought this. Um, this is a little bit big and heavy duty. I came from work here, so, so I stole the one from work. Actually, I just borrowed it. I'll bring it back. Uh, I have a little one at home. The, if you don't have one of these and you cook at home, then this thing is heaven. I've got a little KitchenAid one. It was cheap. Um, but you can puree stuff right in a pot. It's ex it's exact same thing as a blender, except for it's on the end of a stick, and it's, you can blend it in the thing. And you can blend it while it's boiling. I mean, it, it, they're just great. I make smoothies at home in the morning with them right in the yogurt container. This is an amazing tool. It's super, super convenient. I use mine almost as much as anything in my kitchen. Uh, and it's just, you know, you just turn it on and it spins and purees it. Let's see if this is cooked enough that it'll puree. I could just bray this smooth right in the pot.
And then once it's pureed, you'll know if you think it's a little too thick. Um, you can add a little more liquid. If it's not, if it's too thin, you accidentally add a little too much water and you can um, have a thin soup or let it cook for a little while and reduce. Sometimes if I were going to do a soup like this and I were going to leave all the carrots and onions and squash whole, I would take out, you know, about a coffee mug full and puree that in something. This won't fit in a coffee mug. My one at home would. And puree just a little bit of it and add that back. And then the broth has a little bit of body to it. It's not real watery. And, and you can add pieces and a little bit of broth. Yeah, exactly. Um, or we could have done pureed the whole thing and saved a few pieces of the squash and diced them all up and added them as a garnish. That, that works out really, really well. I do that when I do the risotto. These aren't quite soft enough. They're really close. I'm just trying to rush it a little bit because the best part of this is eating. But we got to get to that part. Boy, I sure am ready for winter. It doesn't look like winter out there. Did everyone vote? Yeah. Or everyone that can, right? Yeah, everyone. I can't think how many times I've heard someone say that this is the one that really matters. This is going to be the most important one ever. I think I hear that every four years. <laughs> this is the one. This is going to change everything. Is important for our life. Yeah. This looks so good. These squash are great too. They, if you keep them real cool, you know they're all harvested. They just they sit around all winter long it's in storage. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. pieces that just keep getting away from me. Making a mess of this poor tablecloth. You don't ever put a little garlic there? Yeah, sometimes. I love garlic. Yeah, garlic would have been great in this. Um, it's a per it's a flavor thing. It, it'd be a little bit, of, it'd be a little heat, you know, it'd be a little hot, a little, a little bitter in here. Not bitter in a bad way, but um, bitter. It'd be a really good flavor in here. I don't think it needs it, but it certainly could. I, you know, it's, it's easy to put garlic in everything. I, li I like garlic. There isn't much garlic wouldn't want to go into. Is this really loud in this microphone? Now is it? I'm doing a soup on my menu this winter that's uh, a roasted chestnut soup. And it's very, very similar to this. I do it almost the same. The only difference is I use chestnuts instead of squash. Uh, there's no seeds to make a stock out of, so I use chicken stock for it and pure it the same like this. I, I even serve it with, I'm going to serve it with croutons almost just like this. Really, really nice. Chestnuts make a delicious soup. And then I finish it with a little heavy cream. Yeah, roasted, they're such a pain to peel, though. You ever peeled chestnuts? Lord. Uh, you can get them uh, peeled in a puree or peeled in, a, in, a, in jars, whole or, or puree, and it's almost as good. It's really, really close. Yeah. 
And I roast them, score them when they cut the bottom and top with a little knife. And um, roast them and then peel them. It's laborious. You need a prep cook, a dishwasher for that, a helper. That makes it much easier. So it's pretty smooth now. If you wanted it like silky, silky, super smooth, um, you could run it through a strainer. Um, I have one at work that's a little finer than that called a chinois. And you push it through with a ladle and it comes out like silk, which is really nice. Um, but like this is good too, it's just different. Uh, this just has little bits in it, you know, a tiny bit of texture still. Let me taste it again now that I've so salted it. Yeah. Baby food. Needs a little more water. <laughs> I got Scott Pence. <laughs> oh, did it drop off? It is huge. I had to see that. We wanted to puree that and put it back into the oven, like double bake it. Do you have any suggestions for some other squash? Something? Let me think. Let me th I do. Let me think about that for a sec, what I would do. So you want to do a dish where you, where you roast it ahead of time and put it back in something? Mm -hmm. um, God, you know, you can do anything you wanted. So what I would do is, is, um, is cut them in half, just like this, mm -hmm. and put butter on them and sprinkle them with a little brown sugar and roast them, um, the cut side up, until they're soft. It'd probably take about an hour. And then um, get it all out, then put it in a little roasting pan like that, and I'd mix it with um, the brown, you got brown sugar, butter, that's what you'd want. And then any spices you'd want to do, like just a teeny bit of nutmeg, is all I would do, but you could do cinnamon, allspice, any one of those fall flavors would be great in it. And then just put little dots of butter, like um, like I've got this butter chopped up real small. Okay. Just a few little dots of butter on the top, maybe a brown sugar again. And then you could do that two days ahead. And then just bake it in the oven. And just warm it up, it'll get a little brown on top. It'd be delicious. It'd be so good. You could do that with spaghetti squash too. Spaghetti squash comes out really nice like that. You could do that with any squash you could get your hands on and that would come out really nice. So the soup's good, it's a little flat, it's not spectacular, which is, which is a little bit by design, because the, the bread's gonna be a little bit of sweet, you know, there's gonna be a little bit of cream, the apple's gonna have a little bit of crunch. So once everything's together, it'll be, it'll be good. And so I just added a little more um, water, uh, just to thin it out a little bit, it was just a little bit too thick. And it's pretty pureed, you know, we got most of the little pieces out of it. That's it, that's, that's um, squash soup. Are you guys ready to try it? So let me finish this with cream and I'll show you what, how I would do it. So you could do this a few different ways, right? So I've got my whipped cream. You could do this so that you gave everyone, like if you were having a dinner party and you had people over, or just for the family. You could serve the soup in a bowl and have a bowl of croutons and a little bowl of apples and a little bowl of um, Whipped cream that you pass to the table now, Lexi, that's just a nice little soft peak. That's perfect. That looks delicious. Um, but another fun way to do it is, how I like to do it, is to put this stuff in a bowl and let people help themselves to soup. You could put it in a water pitcher or in the pot and let people ladle it. So then what I would do is do a little pile of croutons. And you could use any bread. Sweet bread would be nice. This, like I said, this is zucchini bread. And then a little pile of apples. This is how I serve the soup at the restaurant with these croutons, these apples, and fennel pollen. Mm. It's really nice. The fennel didn't go with this. Fennel, like it did. Uh, and the tap, like roll. Yeah. Fennel pollen from the flower, yellow powder. Mm. You know, bee food. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Ah, fennel pala. It's like a powder from the fennel flower. Exactly. Uh -huh. Okay. That is, I always use a seed. Fennel I like fennel seeds, seeds too. What kind yeah. of a flavor yeah. does a fennel? Exactly the same. Yeah. You can smell. If I put a teaspoon, just a pinch, uh -huh. the size of a pinhead on the top of this, you'd be able to smell it from there. It's amazing. Uh -huh. It's in your face smelling. And then a teeny bit of pepper on top of that. That's how I would do it. So then, you know, it's just a little bowl with all the stuff in it. Yeah, okay. You know, and you could serve that like that. Yes. And then I've got a handy ladle here. And we could have put sugar in the, in the whipped cream as well if we wanted it um, a little sweeter. I don't think this needs it though. Yeah. All right, that's that. There you go. Wow. Yeah. Bueno. <laughs> <laughs> like this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So we send them. Okay, you don't dump it all of the stuff. You make this island. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> and everything is just around. Yeah, you like that? Yeah. Those are good. This is a good idea. Don't doubt it. It's a good little thing. It's interesting. Well, you want to relax. Yes, please. That's how I learn. You know how to put it all together. I've messed everything up at least once. That's how, you know what I mean? I, not always twice. Yeah. That's how I learn. Not making my same stupid mistakes again. It's like a, 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 a this expensive restaurant in French restaurant, which was like uh, seven courses, or you know, whatever yep. it is. And my mother comes from Russia and says, this is food? What is there to eat? I say, mom, it's fun. You will eat home on the way home. This is going to be fun. But if you don't... Yeah, I don't like leaving fun. a restaurant hungry. Yeah, because it's like a fun. You know, they make art out of it. It's not like just you do it home. It's just fun. All right, anyone have any questions? And it's worth very good. Yeah, the delicata, do you have to peel that or can you use the peel? You know what, on this red curry squash I use the peel sometimes too. I, I don't think you need to peel them. Some of the f peels freak some people out, I don't know why. They're really, really, really thin and really delicate. I don't peel them. Which one is that? The striped stripe one. Yeah. This this one that I did too, red curry squash, all these are really thin. I mean this one, it's, it's, it's as thin as paper. Um, if you pureed it like this, like I did, and then ran it through a really fine chinois, a uh, fine strainer, it would catch all the skins. Mm -hmm. But this is a fair flavor. Before yeah. Paper. All right. Oh, I missed one of these. Should we try some? Are you guys ready? Mm -hmm. Here, I'll, I'll make you bowls. We'll make them all pretty. It's going to take me a minute doing them five at a time, but that's okay, right? We got time. Mm-hmm.